does. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The smell of fresh pine, cocoa, cinnamon. You are so lucky. And I can't wait to have all of this. Wait, kids? <laughs> you can have them. I will find my Prince Charming first. Please, just take my kids. Mom! Behave! I will leave you with Santa. Yay! Oh, how was the speed dating that I sent you up on? It was... Juicy? Uh, scandalous? Non-existent. What? Next! Molly, you are in your prime. You should have a line of guys waiting to take you out. God. I want you to go to the tree farm, and I want you to buy the most beautiful one you can find. But no buts. Consider this a direct order from your boss. And I will be checking the charges to make sure you follow through. Fine, I will go buy a tree. Now if we can find you something to show this beautifully trimmed tree. I think all the guys in this line are taken. Everyone gets a wish at Christmas. I guess there's hope yet. What do you mean? Well, I can always use my... Christmas wish to find my happily ever after. Well, better late. My Christmas wish is to meet Mr. Wright. Stop beating up your sister. I will ground you for life. I'm sorry, what was that last part? I said, my Christmas wish is to meet Mr. Wright. Hey, she got two wishes. No, she didn't mean it, sweetie. She's just very lonely. Next. All right, slow down. Merry Christmas. Start later. The holidays do not start later. Here, take my... Miss, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't know what happened. I do. I think the tree fell over on you. <laughs> Let me help you up. I'm Tom Wright. Oh. Mr. Wright? No, oh, please. You can just call me Tom. So, can I help you find it? You too. And thank you. Sure. Don't mention it. Take care. Wow. You know, Holly. Yeah. Would you like to, um, um, get some dinner sometime? I mean, if I'm not overstepping. I would love that. Yeah? Tree? Uh, actually, I think the tree picked me. Well, you can't go wrong with a classic noble fur, but, uh, would you consider maybe a Colorado blue spruce? They are super on trend this year. I think I'm gonna go with a noble fur. <laughs> you sure know a lot about trees. Do you work here? No, no, I don't work here. <laughs> but I love Christmas. I'm actually here picking out a tree for myself. Yeah. Can I help you with that? No, I gotta come. Okay. So, um, yes, that's it. How prefer it is? That's the one. Let me help you with that. All right. Come on, let's go. That should do it. Proper knot for a proper tree. You know, I never got your name. Oh, I'm Holly. Nice to meet you. Well, nice meeting you, Holly. <laughs> You're all set, so happy holidays. I think he called it a proper knot? Proper knot? <laughs> no, nah, it doesn't even exist. Nah, this looks like, uh, this looks like a slip knot. You should have done like a timber hitch or maybe even a sheep shank, something you can easily get on Dominy at home. I mean, what is this, amateur hour here? I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk bad about someone I haven't met. It's just, I mean, you really could have hurt somebody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Happened. Was he like having a bad day? Did he get distracted or something? This? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely what? To what you just said. 
Right. Um, I'll, well, I'll get this up on your roof for you. You know what? I just lived on the block. It's probably easier at this point if I just carry it. Oh. Okay. Uh, do you need a hand? Sure. Okay. Awesome, by the way. Holly. Nice to meet you, Holly. <clears throat> oh, last shot! Yeah, get the, the trunk is through there. Yeah. I can get it. Okay. Ouch. Almost there. Okay. Okay. Oh. Good. Just there. Right here. To get something a little smaller. It's fine, just needs a little trimming. Yeah, trimming. He wants to do that shoot before Christmas. Okay, fine. But once you nail down the shoot, can you put it away? Gotta keep perspective, babe. I'm running out agency and I have air traffic control. I'm calling. I love you. I do, but this whole workaholic thing, it's not healthy. When's the last time you trimmed a tree? Isn't this supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. Does it want my desk count? Holly! <laughs> There'll be plenty of time for three trimming and all that other stuff later. Life does not... How do I do that? You got some shears? Okay, um, I think we're gonna need something a little bigger than this. Do uh, you got lights and decorations and all that kind of stuff? I think we're gonna need to make a little trip. Well, I've got this covered. Okay, let's go. What are those for? Uh, tree trimming. Hooks. We? I forgot to get. The I forgot to get hooks. Yeah. Nothing to it. Even your knots. Love knots. My grandfather taught me every knot. Well, about ten knots. There's a lot of them. You know, they're very useful. It's a very specific thing with tinsel. So you take like a good loop of it, right? Like this. And then you go. See how not much nicer that? <laughs> Come on. You should see my grandma's tree. She goes way overboard with the tinsel. It's like, is there a tree to go with that tinsel, Grandma? <laughs> this is amazing. How'd you get so good at this? It's part of my profession. I'm an artist. Hmm. And that includes tree trimming? I work in mixed media. Sort of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing. It's just... This was really fun, and you're a complete stranger. Uh, I was a complete stranger until your tree fell on me and almost killed me. And then we decorated it. <laughs> I think that makes us friends. I'm glad it did, though. Hey, do you want something to eat? Or drink? Oh, no, you don't have to go through all that. Uh, are you kidding me? It's the least I can do. But I'll make you something. Okay. I want to turn down food. How about some pasta? Yeah, maybe. Easy. Or a sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. How about we 
order food. <laughs> That's fine. My treat. <sighs> I'm stuffed. <laughs> Me too. I didn't realize how hungry I was. So your dad was a farmer? Yeah, he was. He was a really special guy. He died about four years ago, just before Christmas. Hmm. Yeah, that must have been really hard on you and your mom. Actually, my mom died when I was 12. It's just me and my pop. Oh, Holly, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think about him all the time. Yeah, my dad, he died a few years ago. It was smart. Well, you know, I have uh, two brothers. My mom. A crazy old grandma. <laughs> and nuts. I mean, whose family isn't, right? You're lucky. Yeah, I am. I know it. Getting kind of late, Miss Holly. I think I should get going. Yeah. I'd like to see you again. Well, you know where to find me. Well, um. Sorry. <laughs> uh. Not really, uh, up on all the new dating customs. Trying to catch up. Here's my number. Call me. No pressure. Alright, I'm gonna go. Photographer's running late, and our first model's a hard out in an hour or so. I'm so sorry. Sorry? Well, you've worked for me for seven years, and you've never been late. You're like a machine. I know there must be a story. Wait, tell me there's a guy. I met a guy. Oh, yes! <laughs> I want details. Well, I got a Christmas tree, like you said. And then the tree fell off my car. And I hit this guy, and he ended up carrying the tree back to my place, and we decorated the tree and ordered food. Wait, are we talking like fairy tale material here? Oh. True love's first kiss. Ah, slow down. Oh, a gentleman. I can get behind that. 
Are you going to see him again? I hope so. Okay. He gave me his number, and I texted him right after he left. Oh. What, what was that? Why? Why? Oh. Look, I've been out the game for a couple years, I know, but aren't you supposed to wait a while before you send the first text? No. No. Austin's different. No, I'm, I'm positive I made the right move. I think. Alright, well, I mean, what do you reply? Well, nothing yet. Alright, look. Oh, great, the photographer's finally here. Alright, bring in the first model. I. It's me. I know you're on the plane. Just want to let you know that I got to the cabin okay, and it is, it's absolutely magical. And really, no one's ever done something so wonderful for me before. I'm meeting Tom tomorrow, so I'll let you know how that goes. And, uh, yeah, I love you. Thank you. Again, really, it means a lot. Hope you have a safe flight, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. was one date. One random, spontaneous, once-in-a-lifetime kind of date. Hello. Austin? Holly, can you hear me? It's Tom from the uh, tree lot. Oh, uh, hi, Tom. How you doing? Good. Really good. Thanks for asking. Uh, Holly, I was wondering if I could maybe take you to dinner this week. Uh, short. Sure. <laughs> What night are you free? Tonight. Oh, that's perfect. How about Del Sol at Midtown? Uh, 8 o'clock, I can pick you up. You know what? It's actually on my way home from work, so I will just meet you there. Sounds good. See you then. Okay. And who is Tom? Actually, you get credit for this one, too. I met him at the tree lot right before Austin. Look at you. See, I told you, reeling him in. Plenty of fish. Hello. Hi. <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you. Please. So, how's your tree? <laughs> the Colorado spruce. It's doing fantastic. Good. How about work? What is it that you do again? I'm in finance, so, you know, the end of the year is always crazy. I'm just trying to wrap everything up before the holidays. I can relate. Yeah? What about you? Have any uh, big plans for Christmas coming up? No. No, usually I've been so busy the past few years, I just work through the holidays. Work through the holidays? 
I help my boss out with her kids, but this year they're going back east, so she's adamant that I unplug. It'll be nice to have some alone time. You have any siblings? No, just me. My parents are no longer with us. I usually spend Christmas with friends, but I always end up feeling like a third wheel. Or like a thirteenth. <laughs> well, I'm sure your friends love having you around. Pino? Sure. To um, never be in the third wheel again. Cheers. Cheers. Very good pick. Thanks. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. God. You been here before? I have. Yeah. I recommend basically everything. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. Dinner was great. Thank you. Yeah. It's one of my very favorite spots. The owner's actually a friend. I'd, uh, I'd like to do this again. Would that be possible? Maybe. <laughs> this is me. I remember. Here. Thank you. Well. well. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Yeah. I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this might sound crazy, but my family and I, we own a cabin in the mountains. We go there every Christmas. I know you said you didn't have any plans for the holidays. So I was wondering if you would maybe want to come join us. Does that sound crazy? No, it's, it's incredibly sweet, but I couldn't impose like that. It would be no imposition at all. As my grandmother always says, the more the merrier. Look, um, sleep on it. We leave the day after tomorrow. I would love it if uh, you would come join us. Okay. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. Okay. Well, good night. <laughs> Again. I told you, you just needed to open yourself up to the magic of the holidays. I don't know what to do. What do you mean? Like last week your love life was non-existent, and now look at you, you're going on a ski trip with a handsome bachelor. I just met the guy. Alright, fine, be independent, just meet him up there. You can stay in her cabin. Oh, Vicky, no, I can't. I that. insist. We're not making it up there this year, and I refuse to let that place go to waste. Oh, this is perfect. You're going? No, I don't know. This is exactly what you need. A fabulous holiday trip with your new guy. He's new, but he's not my guy. I barely know him. Girl, don't be a fool. Besides, me and the family will make the decision for you. We'll know everything you need to after you meet them. And it's a beautiful drive. When's the last time you've been in the mountains? It's been a while. Come on, Holly. Call him and tell him now. I'm not gonna call him now. I will be in Philly. Four honey badgers who are actively plotting an all-nighter to catch dear old St. Nick. Let me live through you in the excitement of love. Fine. I will call him. <gasps> hey, Tom. It's Holly. <gasps> If the invitation still stands, I would love to spend the holidays with you and your family. It's great news. But I'll, I'll meet you up there because I made my own arrangements. Are you sure I don't mind driving you? Yeah, of course. I'll let you know when I arrive in a few days. Sounds perfect. Well, uh, let me know when you get there and uh, drive safe. I can't wait to see you. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Oh! You got a pack. I got a pack. <laughs>
Can I help you find something? I would love that. I need to rent some skis for the week, but if I'm being honest, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Mind if I ask you a few questions, see if we can narrow things down a little bit? Sure. What type of skiing do you usually like to do? It's been a few years. <laughs> a few years isn't too bad. A decade. <laughs> Why are you getting back out there? So, Holly? Austin? Holly! Tom? Tom. Austin. Austin? Holly? Wait a minute. Do you two know each other? So do you like to ski the groomed runs, or are you looking for a little more adventure out of bounds? I'm usually a groomer girl, but I think it's time to broaden my horizons while I still can. Not exactly a spring chicken anymore. <sighs> Come on, you're in the prime of your life. Time's on your side. But since it's been a few years, how about if I set you up with these all-mountain skis? That way you can try a little bit of everything, and you should be able to find what you're looking for by the end of the week. It's perfect. Oh, anything else I can help you with? Uh, maybe some luck. <laughs> I'm going to need it. Or a guardian angel? You're going to do just fine, young lady. The mountain has a way of keeping us in the moment and helping us find things we didn't even know we were looking for. I'll just take these in back and get them set up for you. Holly, I hope you enjoy this holiday. I had the neighbors put up a few decorations. I hope it adds to the Christmas spirit. Just use the smart tablet to work the place. You'll figure it out. Have fun, hun. Enjoy. That's an order. Love, Vicky. Mr. Wright, here we go. How do you two know each other? So how in the world did the three of you meet? Well, it's not the three of us, Grandma. It's the two of us in a third wheel. <laughs> I invited Holly here. You know, like a tricycle. You know, the triangle is the strongest shape in nature. Uh, Holly and I met at a tree lot, actually. I helped her pick out the perfect noble fur and even attach it to her car for her. It was really kind of fate. Wait, wait a minute, that was you? You almost killed me. What are you talking about? Who ties a projectile to the roof of a vehicle with a slipknot? I mean, how dumb can you be? It was practically manslaughter. You really going to start with a name calling? Besides, it couldn't possibly be manslaughter because, unfortunately, no one died. Anyway, about a week later, I call Holly, invited her to dinner, 
we met up, talked for hours and hours. It's like we had known each other our whole lives. Give me a break. All right, that's it. You know what? I don't want to cause any problems. I think I should go. Thank no, you no, so no, much. No, no, please. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry as well. We're sorry. Exactly. Please stay. Holly, sit down. You're my guest too, and I insist that you stay. Tag the halls with bells of Holly. <laughs> Austin, how did you meet Holly? Well, Holly and I met when the tree that Tom um, attempted to secure to Holly's roof with a juvenile knot you can imagine flew off and hit me. So I helped her back to the apartment with the tree and you know we decorated it and spent five hours together. It was nice. It was really nice. At least that's what I thought. Wait a minute. You spent five hours together? Oh my god. Yeah, the, uh, the tree that you picked out didn't even sit in her apartment. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it reminds me of back when I was being pursued by Raymond and others. Before everyone got so entitled and lazy about dating. In the eggnog a little early, Grandma? Oh, hush up, Seth. Your grandfather was wonderful, but he was hardly the only man who was seeking my attention at the time. All right, Grandma. I'm talking. Give me your phone. Okay. Um, here you go. Okay, well, I'm uh, walking away for real this time. Okay. But I'll call you, because I can now. And we can go get that dinner sometime if you want to. Really looking forward to it. Okay. Bye now. Bye. It's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm fine. It's okay, really. Did you tie this thing up on your roof? No, it was the guy at the tree lot. I and about a good old-fashioned cockfight. This has really gone far enough. I agree. Holly and I will go out a date alone. That is that. Why are you taking Holly out? Because it makes more sense. Okay, we have a lot more in common. And look, I don't want to be harsh, but I'm in a little more financially stable situation. I started dating you first. You started dating you first. Actually, no one was dating me. Boys, like I was saying, I was dating a marvelous man when your grandfather came along. Oh, Harry. Grandpa's name is Raymond. And I loved your grandfather. But I often wonder what would have happened if Harry had stuck around. Oh, jeez, Mother. Harry was a musician. And he often had to leave town for long periods of time. And in his absence, Raymond came along and swept me off my feet. We didn't have this cowardly, handheld, swipe right, eyeball thing. You had to walk up to the person, be bold, and take your best shot. Okay, Mom. Tomorrow, why don't you take Holly skiing with you? Both take her on a date. May the best man win. I can speak for myself on this one. I'm not going to be anyone's Christmas conquest. I think I should go. Thank you very much for the, um... <laughs> yeah. Well, so... Well? Austin, come here. I need your help with something. 
own. I'll be right back. Take your time. Listen, Tom, I, hey, I hey, didn't know. I don't need any explanations, okay? I think you're an amazing girl. I think we have something really special, and I'm looking forward to defining exactly what that something special is. So I hope you consider coming skiing with my family tonight tomorrow. Oh, Tom. What? Grandma wants to see you. Oh, really? Come in, Grandma. I'm right back. Look, um, you don't need to come skiing with us tomorrow. I mean, things got pretty strange pretty quickly. I mean, I want to. Really? Are you sure? Are you sure? Because you're the one that ghosted me. Ghost? What ghost? What do you mean? You never texted me back. But now, all of a sudden, because of some weird brotherly competition, you're suddenly interested again? No, 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 not at all. Wait a minute. You texted me? Yes. A couple times. More than a couple times. Holly. What? You were texting my landline. I gave you my house number. Your house number? You gave me a, a landline? Yeah, I, I said call me. I even wrote it on the, the note. Who has a landline anymore? I work from home. It, it makes sense to me. I'm, I'm so relieved, yet super annoyed. So, I guess I will see you tomorrow. Just don't call my landline. Because I'm here now. See you tomorrow, Holly! All right. Tally, Seth. We'll meet you guys at Lodge at noon for lunch. Later. Come on. What about Austin? Oh, he'll find it. One notable exception. This isn't my idea of a perfect day either, bro. Okay? Well, we wouldn't have a cabin to come to if I hadn't saved the family business. That's what this is about, huh? Why don't you just let it go? Stop holding over all of our heads. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Bringing the wrong energy to the mountain. You gotta let this go. Good vibes only, bros. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
doing. So, how are you doing? Honestly, I'm thinking another quiet Christmas alone is sounding more pleasant by the minute. I'll probably head home tomorrow. You know, they really are both sweet. Particularly loud. I say, you're all the way up here and the roads aren't safe. The mountain air is fresh. The skiing is fabulous. Spend another day getting to know them. See what happens? You okay, baby? I don't even want to look. He's okay. It's just... So... Uh, I, I think I'm gonna take off. Sure you don't want to stay for dinner? No, I... I've had enough excitement for the day. Well, can I take you out for lunch tomorrow then? Sure. Okay, then uh, I'll see you for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Holly. Hey. Wait up. Uh, uh, want you something tomorrow? Like lunch or something? Uh, I kind of already have plans. Tom. Of course. What well, about dinner? Come on, I know the nice spot in town. And should we tell Tom? I, I don't really know how to navigate this whole thing. No, no, believe me. This isn't our first dust up. It's cool. Really? Yeah, he already knows. Has anybody seen my wallet? So, uh, dinner? He's staying behind me, isn't he? Yeah. Alright. Bye. Look, I think you're getting ahead of yourself. Just relax. Take a deep breath. I can't believe this is happening. Vicky, they're brothers. Of course it's a big deal. Yeah, it's not like you're serious with either one of them. I just think I should go home. I think you're overreacting. Look, last week you didn't have any guys. Now you have two. It's not like that. I mean, sure they're brothers, but I mean, that could be kind of hot. Vicky! <laughs> okay, alright, alright. Jokes aside, just let him take you out and show you the sights. I mean, maybe by the end of the holidays you'll find love. Really? From where I'm sitting, sounds like you have two Mr. Rights. I just have to pick one. Two Mr. Rights? Yeah. That's what I said. No. That was my wish at Santa's cottage. Well, not exactly, but I repeated it and... And now here I am. You don't really believe in all that Christmas magic nonsense, do you? You. So, um, I have to ask you, Holly. Where do you see yourself in five years? What do you mean? Oh, you're a very driven person. You're always working. I was just wondering what you're working towards. I guess I never really thought about it. Really? Yeah. I mean, honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm running away from something instead of running towards something. You know what I mean? What I do know... So all your talk about running has built up my appetite. The Giardino here is fantastic. Do you like fish? I'll order it for us. It's great. You're gonna love it. Hi. Hi. Hello. Is that your car? Yeah. Sorry, haven't had a chance to get the heater fixed. 
the heater? What about the doors? Don't worry, I got blankets. Bundle you up. Okay. Snow globe. Here, I'll give you a few moments to look up the menu. Menu? Hey, man. Yeah. Your brother brought me here for lunch. Okay, it's fine. I mean, this is the nicest spot in town. I don't mind. Lunch was really good. <sighs> I'm sorry, sir, but I've got a proper jacket is required for dinner. What? You must wear the jacket. Please. Oh, um, oh, oh yeah, sorry, of course. I should have. Obviously, I don't come here too often. Wait, hang on. Give me half a second. Thanks. Okay. Oh. Hey, It's not you. Excuse me? I mean, uh, it's me. Actually, it's Tom, really. And he's a good guy. Okay, we just don't usually see eye to eye on things. We've got um, very different values and perspective on everything. I see. And, uh... And, uh... You know, it's just, guys like Tom, they shouldn't always win. I'm not something to be won, Austin. No, of course not. It's not, that's not why I'm in it. It's a jacket. My hand is stuck in it, I can't get it out of it. <laughs> You're a disaster. What do you think? Do you want to get out of here? Yes, can we please? Let's go. Let's go. Liz? Yes. What can I get for you? Tom. Liz. Oh my gosh. It's been so long. Yes, it has. You know, I don't think I've seen you since that night you made me wait three hours for the fall formal. You remember that, huh? Mm hmm That was not my fault. I should never go for the real bow tie. They are impossible. You are still sticking with that story? I'm sticking to it because it's the truth. <laughs> okay. You look great, Liz. Thank you. How are you? How is your family? We're doing good. I'm running the family business now. Oh, how's that going? Um, well, you know, um, market volatility has challenged our investment strategy, but we're weathering the storm. Wow, impressive. Is it? Mm-hmm. 
I, you know, I have a proposition for you, Mr. Finance Guy. Okay. I have a bake that I need to get in the oven. So if you help me, then coffee's on the house. That is a 100% savings. That sounds like a business opportunity I should not pass up. Besides, you look like you could use a cookie. Take that off. Take, take this off? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, I've never really baked cookies before. Really? Well, a little bit with my grandmother, but not, not, not much. Okay. You gotta try this? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do we do with this? What do we do with yeah. it? Put it down right there? Yep. Okay. Okay. Ah. Ah. So it doesn't stick on the thing? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you work for a mom and pop business. That that is not an easy business model. I know. I mean, the margins are just so slim, even in the best of times. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gotta be a complete lunatic to own a place like this. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's mine. What is? This place. I own this place. This place? Yeah. This, this is this is your. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I love it. I love this place. Okay. No, I do. I, I love it. I mean, it's the decor in here is great, and, and the marketing strategy is great, and you clearly have best in class goods. <laughs> Look, I bought this place for me. Well, I like that. We do have three very strict rules that you should know about. One, no fur, unless it's fake. Number two, unless it's a dog, and then you're required to stop in and say hello. <laughs> and number three, probably the most important rule. If the weather forecast calls for anything more than two inches of snow, then you're closed. Doesn't the sense of propriety ever sneak in there is? I mean, you'd be closing your doors at what I would think would be some of your most profitable hours. <laughs> that was the whole point of this place was for me to make my own rooms. But I love what I do, and I, I pride myself on being the best baker I can possibly be. But I work to live, not the other way around. Butter on anything, it tastes good. The more the merrier. Lather up my boot. Delicious. I mean, I was thinking more like a bagel, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just I was thinking a little outside the box. You're an odd one, Austin, right? I mean, who doesn't have a cell phone these days? Me. I don't know. A landline works just fine. You could have the collective knowledge of the world at your fingertips. I mean, do you really just want to check out like that? Check out? More like check in. I don't know. I just think they're just such a distraction. What if something important happens? How are you gonna know? If it's important enough, I'll know. Although, you know, there is one important thing that's starting to make me think I should get a cell phone. Oh, yeah? What's that? I don't want to miss another text from you again. Hey, guys? Hey, what are you guys doing here? Tom called us, invited us bowling. What a coinky dink. I love it here. I love throwing the old eight ball down the wooden runway, just hanging out with the laid-back town folk. So great to see you both here. Ray, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is 7 p.m. karaoke time. Karaoke? Who's first, huh? Where did Tom go? Check, check, check. Can I get a little more reverb on this, please? Yeah, I got you, bro. Thank you, bro. Hey. Looks like Tommy's pulling out all the stops. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Everyone, this is going out to a, uh, to a very special someone. Holly, this one's going out to you. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is a night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world. In sin and error pining Night, oh, 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 night, night when, when Christ was born Night, I know this isn't ideal, or anything even close to normal, but come on, I really think we have something here. Holly, wait, wait. I am so sorry this has happened. You guys, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. I think it's clear I obviously bring out the worst in you. I don't want to be the reason you guys grow even further apart. This is the time of year when families should be coming together, not, not fighting. Your brothers. And it's almost Christmas. Happy holidays. Look what you did! It got out of hand, Vic. Two men battling for you? <laughs> it's the dream, Holly. Trust me, they did not look like men. They look like two boys fighting over a shiny new toy. They're both great guys, but this is out of control. Okay, before the brotherly quarrel, who would you have picked? Tom is focused and driven, like me. And Austin is spontaneous, sensitive. He's a mess, and I kind of love it. Not like that. At least, I don't think like that. Maybe I'm not supposed to be with either one of them. There's someone out there for you. Even if it's not Tom or Austin, this was a huge step in the right direction. So what are you going to do? I'm going to spend Christmas Eve here alone. And in the morning, I'll drive back down the mountain. Really? You have made this such a special holiday for me, but it's time to get back to reality. I just need to go home. Oh, let me know what you do either way. I love you. I'm here for you. Thanks, I love you too. Merry Christmas. May I come in? Of course. You got a little something for the tea? Yeah, there's sugar, cream. I can find you some honey if you'd like. Something a little harder. 
I don't think this cabin came stocked with Christmas spirits. <laughs> don't bother. There's enough spirit in the bowling alley tonight. How are you holding up? I just... They're... I'm driving home in the morning. And? And I can certainly say it's been eventful. Oh, good. Who wants to have a boring life anyway? Actually, predictable sounds pretty good at the moment. When I met my Raymond... Harry and I were still dating at the time. Harry was a wonderful man. We had so much in common. Way more than Raymond and I did. Harry was a musician. I was a singer. It seemed to be perfect. Till he appeared and the soul felt his work. The thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices. We He had his opinion, I had my opinion. Things would heat up, we would quarrel, but you know, dear, you gotta have the friction to have the heat. Look, Holly, Tommy is gonna be fine. He is very driven, and he's always gonna find a way to make something work. Austin, well, he's a very sensitive man. He sees the world different than most. Say that again. And I see that you appreciate that in him. There's something there. It's very special. And you both know it. But, look, I'm never one to pry. It's just not my way. Do you know what ever happened to Harry? Let me know what to do either way. I love you. I'm here for you. Thanks, I love you too. Merry Christmas. May I come in? Of course. You got a little something for the tea? Yeah, there's sugar, cream. I can find you some honey if you'd like. Something a little harder. I don't think this cabin came stocked with Christmas spirits. <laughs> don't bother. There's enough spirit in the bowling alley tonight. How you holding up? I just... Things would heat up. We would quarrel. But you know, dear, you gotta have the friction to have the heat. There... I'm driving home in the morning. And? And I can certainly say it's been eventful. Oh, good. Who wants to have a boring life anyway? Actually, predictable sounds pretty good at the moment. When I met my Raymond, Harry and I were still dating at the time. Harry was a wonderful man. We had so much in common. Way more than Raymond and I did. Harry was a musician. I was a singer. It seemed to be perfect. Raymond, on the other hand, and I were almost opposites. But that made our life so interesting. You know, he had his opinion. I had my opinion. <sighs> Look, Holly, Tommy is going to be fine. He is very driven, and he's always going to find a way to make something work. Austin, well, he's a very sensitive man. He sees the world different than most. Say that again. And I see that you appreciate that in him.
there's something there. It's very special. And you both know it. But, look, I'm never one to pry. It's just not my way. Do you know what ever happened to Harry? <laughs> Can I talk? Thanks. Austin, how do you really, truly feel? I don't know how I feel. I'll tell you how I feel. She's the first thing I think about when I wake up, and she's the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. But? But Tom is my brother. I just, I can't. I can't do that to him. I see. It's hard for me to admit this, but I look up to him. Always have. Have you told your brother how you feel? No. No way. Can't do that. Not even if I did, he doesn't care what I think. He doesn't care what I say. You know, Tom, he's so ambitious, driven, confident. Wish I was more like him. He just took over the responsibilities when Dad passed. And I was fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm so grateful. I just wish you wouldn't hold it all in my head. Anyway, no matter how much I care about Holly, family comes first. Been standing there. Long enough. I do care what you think. I'm proud of the man you are. I've always been envious of your ability to go after what you want in life. I wish I had passion like that to go after something. You took over Dad's company and kept his legacy going. Some pretty big shoes you were asked to fill. You did it. You can never do that. You helped the family out in other ways. And stepping into dad's shoes was honestly the most convenient thing that I could do. I didn't have anything else. Well, all that hard work is to be in the world together. I love you, brother. about Holly, is that true? Do you love her? Yeah, I think I do. I know I do. But don't worry. Family comes first. Exactly. So go after her. What? She's a really great lady. And you are the right man for her. You serious? Yeah. Better hurry up. I know she's planning on driving down the mountain. She's leaving any minute. What are you waiting here for? Go! Go on! Go get it, bro.
trying to communicate to you the way I was really feeling. Look, I should have handled my brother like an adult. I talked to Tom. And we, I, respect whatever you decide. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you're the most amazing girl I've ever met. And I have completely fallen. I wasn't talking to you. I hope you guys don't mind. I invited a guest. Like Grandma always says, the more the merrier. I got a surprise. I got a surprise. Merry Christmas, Betty. 